Closed captioning provided by Sammy's Cafe No. 2. Open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Sammy's Cafe No. 2 in Rancho Cucamonga. Let's Dine Out is made possible by support from Food for Life Baking Company, makers of over 60 organic, all-natural sprouted baked goods, as well as gluten-free and vegan products. Food for Life Baking Company, dedicated to better health since 1964. Foodforlife.com. Serve Pro of South Redlands, Yukaipa, providing 24-hour emergency service to any size residential or commercial emergencies, like water, fire, mold, or storm damage. Professional, insured, and bonded. Serve Pro of South Redlands, Yukaipa. Bratworks Gourmet Hot Dogs in Redlands. Contemporary casual dining featuring gourmet hot dog and sausage sandwiches, salads, and other culinary creations. Other locations in San Bernardino and Palm Desert. And viewers like you, supporting local public television. Thank you. I'm food critic Alan Borgen, member of the Southern California Restaurant Riders. I've been finding the best restaurants in the Inland Empire and Southern California for over 27 years. This is my job. This is my passion. Let's dine out. Welcome to another delicious edition of the Let's Dine Out show. I'm food critic Alan Borgen. And I'm Trisha Jansen. And boy, we're going to the desert. You know, you always want to travel to the desert. Well, here we are. <laughs> No, we're traveling to Greece today. Greece? And uh, Alan. <laughs> what are you doing? I see you have a little boo-boo there. I don't get this. You all saw the movie. We're visiting Greece today, and you know you can't go to Greece and have Greek food without the famous blue cleaning fluid that cleans everything and fixes everything. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You saw I the movie. I have no idea. I know you did. Uh, what's on the menu tonight? <laughs> Tonight, Alan and I are taking you to the desert cities of Palm Springs and Palm Desert for two wonderful restaurants. First, we're off to downtown Palm Springs for some authentic Greek food at Greek Islands. Then it's off to nearby Palm Desert for some inspiring French food at Café des Beaux Arts. The Greek Islands restaurant in downtown Palm Springs doesn't look all that exciting from the outside, but once you enter the long and narrow dining room, you're instantly transported to a gorgeous Greek village. The brightly colored walls and murals set the tone for some delicious and authentic dishes from southern Greece, while owner and chef Dimitrios Martas, his wife Sarah, and son Dorian ensure Greek Islands is a one-of-a-kind dining experience you won't want to miss. Opa! You know, I've always wanted to go to Greece. I, I don't know what about it, what, you know, what is so great about it. I think the dancing, I love to dance. I agree, that's scary. Well, you know, when you're eating Greek food or you go to Greece, everybody's Greek. <laughs> And I took the liberty of looking up our names to translate oh, really? our names in the ancient Greek vocabulary, what it is. So my name translates to goddess of beauty. I was like, wow. And Alan's, Alan's, you're the goddess of food. Well, no. <laughs> the goddess of food. Well, your name, Alan doesn't translate. <laughs> so let's, I made that up. <laughs> let's talk food. Ugh, okay. You know, the menu, they, this restaurant's been here about two and a half years, I yeah. believe. Everyone here is from Greece. They, <laughs> they all really speak Greece. Are. They really are. No hamburgers. I mean, every Greek restaurant yes. are owned by uh, Greeks, but very nice Greek family. They're really passionate about the food. Almost everything comes from Greece. The fish, they import well, you'll find it. out during yeah. our reviews. They import it. A lot of stuff. The owner also uh, sold wines before, and so he knows all about the Greek wines and can do a wonderful pairing for you. Large selections of Greek Large wines. Large selections of Greek wines, so good very stuff. good. So we're going to butcher these names. We don't want letters. We don't want it's the... It's called entertainment. Rosacea Stone or whatever it's called. Who? <laughs> <laughs> you got to cut that. Rosacea Stone? <laughs> What the, let's just get into food. Oh, oh. my gosh. <laughs> she hasn't been drinking either. <laughs> okay, the first item, and again, pardon uh. the pronunciation. Fikalia spreads, $14. So the first one is tzatziki. We all know what tzatziki is pretty much. It's a goat milk yogurt with cucumbers and dill and garlic. You know, I love that this is a very, very fresh tasting dip. It's great. Their pitas are delicious. They have a little roasted garlic and, and herbs on them. They're very, very good. Oh, nice. The next one is tricofitin. Did I say that right? Kafaria. Kafaria. <laughs> Kafaria. 
whatever. That's feta cheese mix. It's feta cheese. <laughs> Just think pimento cheese spread. That's exactly what it reminds me of. Has a beautiful flavor. The feta cheese has a really nice uh, tanginess to it. Next we had Milit Zano Salada. I think I got that. <laughs> Roasted baby eggplant. So um, this is more like a baba ganoush. It, they roast the eggplant, so it brings out that very smoky flavor. They use whipped garlic and EVOO with a little bit of parsley. Very good. And then they had hummus, which is just a chickpea garbanzo bean mm -hmm. um, with lemon and uh, extra virgin olive oil and tahini. You know, they're all really good. I suggest getting it as a starter because it's a great way to share, have a little uh, a sangria, and just enjoy your day. <laughs> After... After the meal. After the meal. Yeah. There you go. Done. I agree. It was very nice. Yeah, very, very good. The next thing we have was Saganaki Kefalatori. Did good. I say that right? Oh my gosh, I could totally go to Greece now. $11. So this is an imported Greek cheese. This is a yellow, almost like a sharp, um, like a cheddar. And it has a, a sharper ch cheese flavor. They take it in a pan and they put a little flour on it and put it in hot oil and they melt it. And I'm talking, this is like, it comes sizzling to the table. They put a little um, brandy, brandy on it flambe. and flambe it. And it's like the best cheese love you ever had. It's nice gooey. It, I've had it before where it's very salty. This wasn't This salty. is not salty at all. And, the, and the, the texture was almost like mozzarella. You just kind of pull it and pull it. It and is. Pull it and he also puts a little lemon on it too. And I think the lemon does help right. with, the, with the saltiness of the flavor. You serve it on pita if you want, or you could just... just Eat it all up. It it's nice. so, so good. It's from it's uh, flambéed on the bottom and, and on the top. It's so, nice so good. Great. Okay, you want to you talk butcher now? Okay. Oh, my goodness. Talos Omesis. This is for, for two people. You $17. did great. I have no idea what I said. This is basically a seafood. This is yes. char-grilled. It's shrimp, octopus, and calamari. Now, it's seasoned with oregano, salt, and pepper, lime juice. Now, the, uh, the shrimp and the calamari, they use lemon juice to kind of finish it off and a red wine uh, vinaigrette for the octopus. Now with the uh, with uh, octopus, you get two big tentacles. I mean, these are, you know, <sighs> yeah. big ones. <laughs> and what was nice about it, they had a, char, a nice charbroiled flavor did. on it. I really like the shrimp. I think you got like three shrimp. Very succulent, sweet and succulent. Yep. I love calamari, I love octopus. The octopus, the negative thing about octopus, if you don't cook it right, it right. can be very tough. I guess with calamari too. This is unbelievably tender. It's all about texture. Why people don't like it, yeah. it's beyond me. You have to try it because there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't have a, you know, it's not like 7,000. It's not fishy. No, it's it, not like it a Disney movie where you, big giant octopus. Well, kind of. It kind of looks like monsters she, on a plate. You I'm just going to say, I did you try did it. What? I, it's big. Well, that's okay. I'm just saving my calories for later. Oh, but no. what I will say is the sauce is so light and fresh. No, it's no. very bright and it just, it, it tastes like the ocean. It's a very, very beautiful All the Greek flavor. sauces are very simple. They highlight the food. They're, really they're not hidden by the right. food. Next came the Brunzini. He's very, very happy about this one. Yes. This is $24. Now this was, um, it's called, it's like a striped bass, but it's from um, Greece. Greece, they fly it they in. They fly it in yeah. fresh. Yes. Now what he does is debone it. I would have loved to have seen it because there was no bones on the thing. I mean, this thing was pure flesh. Yeah. Absolutely delicious. Salt, pepper, and olive oil, and that's it. A little bit of lemon juice. Mm -hmm. lemon you squeeze on it. Yeah. It's a sweet meat. It's firm. It's not fishy at all. No. I thought this was excellent. It was served with um, no, peas. Now these are frozen peas, but it's sauteed with garlic, tomato paste, tomato diced tomatoes, and dill. I I don't like frozen anything. This is really really good. I really liked it. And then it came with also a rice spinach tomato mixture. That was really and good. And that had a lot of dill in it too. So to me, this is just a great dish for twenty four dollars. What a steal. Yeah, um, you didn't mention that the uh, the top of the fish they do a little red pepper, like a like bell pepper, red oh, bell pepper, enough. and capers. So the brininess of the caper That's really fine. worked well with the flakiness of the fish. It was a really beautiful nice. flavor, very light, but it added that nice little right. extra texture to it. Right. So good. The next item we have is paidakaya. I did say that right. I don't know. Paidakaya, $24. This is lamb chops, four of them, uh, beautifully plated. These are New Zealand baby uh, lamb chops that he has imported in. Um, this has a little bit of orange, rosemary, thyme, and oregano. It's perfectly cooked. They do a little bit of a light lemon sauce. Just uh, It was barely there. I didn't really taste it with a little garlic and olive oil. It's served with orzo with peas and carrots. 
You know, I love the lamb. I felt like it, I wanted something minty to go with it. I wanted maybe a little bit more of a that's mint American, profile to that's go. That's an American. No, it's not. Middle Eastern people do a lot of mint rubs on their lamb, and it really perfectly matches that. I'm not talking mint jelly. I'm talking about a, a fresh mint. Okay. I also feel like the peas and carrots, I am not a fan of them at um, all. I just feel totally like disagree. fresh vegetables would highlight this dish so much nicer. A fresh asparagus, fresh totally anything. Disagree. This I don't like delicious. canned anything. Totally disagree with that. Okay. Also, well, maybe I thought the lamb was good with orig uh, or oregano, rosemary, oregano, thyme. And olive oil, marinated, and that's that just makes a difference. So yeah. I thought the lamb chops were great. They were nice simple. and tender, simple, I mean, very simple. Very simple. Yeah. The next thing, if you like like pie or you like casserole. lasagna or casserole, this is the Greeks' version of a really great casserole. And it's, it's called. called Moussaka, <laughs> $15. So this is beautiful layers. First of all, they make it in a clay uh, ceramic dish. And so what happens is they lay down some beautiful thinly sliced potatoes that caramelize on the bottom. And I didn't realize that until I really got into it. And so instead of a pasta noodle or a lasagna noodle, they're using a potato. Then it's layers of sauteed ground meat, which has a very nice profile. It has a, maybe a little allspice or clove it's or nutmeg. cinnamon, nutmeg. nutmeg. It has a nice little interesting flavor in there. Then there's eggplant, and then they top it with a bechamel sauce, which is a creamy, uh, with butter and cream and a little flour to thicken it. you mention ground beef? Yes, I did. Okay, I'll make sure. So you get this creaminess from the bechamel sauce, you get this very savory meat, and then you get this like caramelized potato on the bottom. It's, it's delicious. delicious. I don't want to forget about, they serve on the side, they serve these lemon potatoes. They're just wedges of simple potato that he roasts. And they have this lemony profile that is. So it picks up the lemony. It really does. What's well, nice is the, it's not only a little slight lemony, but the bite to it, the chew, get a little chew to yeah, it. Yeah, a little chew a on the skin. Chew, yeah, so very good. nicely done potatoes. And then fresh green beans that are stewed with the tomato, onion, garlic. Right. Very, very good. Nice dish. I really Absolutely. Like this a lot, so. Next came the Arne Giovasti. This is basically also buco, $18. It's yes. <laughs> easier. It's easier. This is a slowly cooked lamb shank. Um, it's about two and a half, about two and a half hours they cook it at. Yeah. It's, got, it's on a bed of orzo, a tomato orzo. Yes. And it's served with green beans and again, those wonderful potatoes. Yeah. I love Oso Buco. What a great price for $18. Now, one of the things about Oso Buco is it's got a little fat to it. It does. And you want that fat. That's what, it goes right into the meat. But this is great between the, the tomato orzo and all, just all the ingredients. Just, yes. And for $18, a steal. The last but not least is we have Glacto Barocchio. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wait till you see how this is spelled. $5. You know, this is like, um, it's, a, it's like a, I want to say like a pudding. No, it's not even like a creme brulee. It has the texture of um, like a filling, almost like a like a pie it's a very, filling. It's like very, very thick. It is very Rich thick. Rich and creamy. So thick. it's 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 a cream base, and then they put phyllo dough, and it's it's sort of like a almost like a wet baklava yeah. in some in some essence. They have orange zest in it. I didn't get a real pronounced no. orange flavor to it. Um, I didn't love it. It wasn't my favorite thing. So then I asked for baklava because you know you can't go wrong with baklava, and I love their baklava. They don't use the rose water in it. It doesn't have that. I, I'm not a real huge fan of that rose I would water know, flavor. Offer you too. Well, I will later, maybe <laughs> if you're good. But this baklava is really nice. Flaky, flaky layers with the walnuts inside. Mm. It's a perfect to me, a perfect uh, baklava to get. So I highly suggest that. Okay, Trish, hate to ask this one. What were your favorites? I'm gonna say the picalia spreads. I love just having the dips and dipping in that. That's my favorite thing to do. Oh gosh, I don't even want to pronounce it. Uh, the Saganaki Kafalakotori. <laughs> the fried cheese. Okay. I mean, you bite that and you're just like, where's this been my whole life? I mean, it, it's seriously so good with the brandy and the cheese. I'm gonna say I love their baklava because you know you can't go wrong with baklava. I thought the uh, let's see the um, the octopus shrimp. No, Calamari. you have to say the name. No. Mm -mm. Okay. Say the name. Thalamuses. Thalamuses. <laughs> messes. Um, I thought the bronzini, the fish was excellent. It really was. Again, it was flesh. It was white. It was firm. It had no fishiness to it. A little, little like a piccata. Really oh. impressive presentation. You know, Very if you nice. want to impress somebody, it's a great presentation. And lastly, I think the lamb shank. I mean, for, for $18, it was a steal. And yeah. I'm a, I'm a, also, buco is one of my favorite Italian dishes, but right. this is kind of the, the Greek same. version. Yeah. Everybody's version. Greek. Coppa. <laughs> We really got into it. Now, then, I hate to see the next one. Because <laughs> now we're off to where? France? France, yes. We're going to go to Cafe des Beaux Arts in uh, Palm Desert. Do you know French? Je ne parle français. No, uh, I don't. Here, French fries? Uh, uh, yeah, Palm Frites. <laughs> yes. Stay tuned. <laughs>
Located in the beautiful shopping district of Ilfa Sale in Palm Desert stands Café de Beaux Arts, a delightful French bistro and bar serving a variety of popular French-inspired foods with a distinct California twist. Under the guidance of owner Didier Bloch and daughter Viana, Café de Beaux Arts aims to make your dining experience that of an authentic French sidewalk cafe. Wow, I can't believe such a fast trip from Greece to France in about, what, an hour, half yeah, hour? Yeah, so quick. Bonjour! Oh, no, not a fake accent again. <laughs> Come on, please spare me. It's all, all right. starting. You don't want to hear that. So. I know. You know, this restaurant's very special to me. The owner, DDA, he used to own Le Cheminade some 25 years ago. It was, I believe, in Ontario. If you remember Le Cheminade, it was a, a classic French restaurant. Well, guess what? He's been here for about 25 years yeah. now. Same exact type of food. Oh. A little bit less upper level in terms of, you know, pretentious. Yes. But this is a, really a fun place. It is. It has an authentic French bistro. You can sit and watch the traffic go by on the Rodeo Drive of the desert. It's beautiful. All right, watch it. You can hear it, too. Yes, you can. So there's a lot of great food here. So let's get right into All it. All right. We started off with breakfast crepes. $12.95. I'm telling you, this is a little bit of heaven for breakfast. And we, and we talk about that all the time where breakfast can be so mundane, it's so boring, you know, eggs, bacon, whatever. This is a breakfast that if you want to have your taste palates tickled, this is the one. So we've got these crepes and they're stuffed with scrambled egg, chorizo, a burzen cheese, which is a French, uh, it's a cow, it's a creamy cheese, it has herbs in it, so it's like a spread, topped with a beautiful bechamel and an aioli that has a little bit of heat in it, and I'm telling you, wow. you know, I, I don't know how you get eggs so velvety, and they were. I mean, the chorizo gives that little bit of heat in the back, a little bit of saltiness. I think this bechamel sauce is by far the best bechamel sauce I have ever tasted in my life. And if you want to say velvet, if you want to know what velvet tastes like, it's this sauce. So, so stupendous. See, I love the chorizo. I Some chorizo tend to be real greasy. This was not at all. real meaty, had a nice bite to it, and just a delicious breakfast item. And the little bit of the orange sauce, the aioli, just added a nice level of flavor. I really liked it. It kind of brightened up the bechamel a little bit. But the next dish, oh, yeah. eggs bowl arts. This is $14.50. Oh my. Two poached eggs on two English muffins with a crab cake with a cream spinach and a hollandaise sauce. It was served with, they call it breakfast potatoes, which is sauteed with onions and bell peppers. This is spectacular. It's real crab. Oh yeah. The spinach, it's perfect cream spinach. I agree. They didn't miss a trick on this. Everything is right. The hollandaise sauce, yes. it stayed together. It had a great flavor. I agree. This is a great Benedict. It's I a great it's rendition. Yeah. You know, so often we'll go to a restaurant and try a rendition of Eggs Benedict, mostly because I insist because I love Eggs Benedict. And most of them are the same boring ones. And they are, but the way that they plated it with the spinach, it was almost like a spinach Florentine, right. if you will. So it had the cheese and the cream in it. It was perfect. That's good. Next, we had chicken curry salad, $14.95. Now, I know you're thinking salad. Okay, we're doing another salad. This is a flavor explosion. This is uh, chicken, white, white meat chicken, served with golden raisins, celery, onion. There's a little apple in there with curry and mayo that's served upon a, a shredded lettuce, iceberg lettuce bed. Then they have a beautiful uh, papaya sliced all the way around the plate and a little bit of lime. I took a bite of this and the flavors, there's something about curry with golden raisins. It has that very Indian, you know, profile, which is so lovely. It was, it was a lot lighter. A lot of times curry can be overpowering. Yes. This wasn't. Very light, very beautifully balanced. And I love the papaya with the mango or with the uh, with the curry. It was so perfectly balanced. I highly suggest getting this. And if you don't like curry normally, you'll like this oh, one. Yeah. I guarantee it. So beautiful. That was good. So good. Next, it was called Gratin de Croquille Saint Jacques. This is $27.95. Wow, this is six jumbo scallops with a delicious dry vermouth cream sauce. And it was, it was a little breadcrumbs on top and Gruyere, which is, you know, Swiss cheese. Yes. I thought this is delicious. These weren't these little boring base scallops, but I love this sauce. And this is a real classic dish. I agree. Normally, I don't like seafood and cheese mixed together. Usually, I'm you like, don't? Oh my no, goodness. normally, I'm like, it doesn't go. But this was a beautiful pairing. I thought the flavors were great and just a very spectacular flavor. It was. Loved it. Uh, speaking of classic dishes, bouillabaisse. You can't get any better. Yes. $29.95. I, I absolutely love Bouillabaisse. base. This is probably one of my favorite ones. For one thing, it was an ocean full of seafood. We're talking fish, which was sea bass, three jumbo shrimp, fresh mussels, fresh clams, and a, I have breathtaking saffron broth. Yes. Absolutely delicious. 
Now it came with three toasted baguette slices with a roasted bell pepper rouge sauce. And what's nice, you get the, you get the bread, yes. dip it in this um, rouge sauce, and then you put it in the saffron broth. Yeah. It's just spectacular. If you like seafood, if you like a really good brothy saffron um, broth, this is yeah. what you gotta get. It was good. I love the sauce, uh, with, we added a creamy, velvety texture to the to the broth, and so I thought that was really key. To me, I drizzled on there, I drizzled oh, mine no. in there, and I like it how it uh, mixed it. It just added a creamy level to it that I, I liked it better. I know you're not a big seafood fan, but don't you want to just pick that up and just put a little bit of it? No. Oh, come on, you, do, you don't want to do that? Oh, and man. I don't even want to see. Well, I want to just little, little, I want to take a bath in it. It was that good. Please don't. I felt like Shamu, but it would be good, so. <laughs> Definitely Next, not. we had an incredible classic dish, yes. French dish, duck a l'orange. This is $28.95. Wow. This is a half roasted duckling with an orange sauce. It was absolutely baked, perf seared. It was. With crispy skin, yep. a delicious, rich orange sauce. Oh, I'm getting excited. This is so amazing. With mashed potatoes, broccoli, and zucchini spirals. Yeah, really the spiral later. Like a spaghetti type thing. Yeah. But I thought this was delicious. I would have liked a little bit more crispier skin. You know, typically it I is. I would agree. It, now it's set for a little bit as we filmed it, so maybe that's it. Yeah. But the sauce was magnificent. Yeah, I love the flavor of the orange, the sweeter orange flavor with the duck. It pairs really beautifully. It, you know, it cuts kind of the duck can be rich. It is a little fatty, so well, that orange sauce really cuts that flavor and really helps. Gotta get it the fat palatable. because I thought most of it was rendered and when they, you know, when they cook yeah, it. Yeah, it wasn't uh, very fatty, but I'm no. saying that the orange flavor definitely yeah. helps pair it's just with such it a very great dish, beautifully. So. Next we had steak au pavois for $34.95. This is a 10 ounce filet mignon with a black and green peppercorn sauce. Now, this was perf perfectly, perfectly cooked. So tender. Um, they do a little bit of a, um, was it wine in the sauce? I didn't even, I didn't even read it. Was it I a think brandy? It was brandy? I think I it was, was brandy, brandy with the peppercorn and a little, finished with a little cream. I love the sauce. My critique is that there was a lot of peppercorn in it. And for well, me, duh, that's what you want. I know, but for me, it was a little strong in the peppercorn flavor. Just for no. me personally, I just thought it was like a little too much for me. When I have peppercorn, I want to bite into it and get that big crunch it's, and it's bitter. An explosion. I think I would prefer that they crack the peppercorns a little bit more. That, that does make a difference. There was a lot well, of whole peppercorns and it's a little like, you know, what am I chewing? You know what I mean? Uh, I, so I just, I didn't really like the texture of it. Disagreement, but what else is new? But the flavors were good. good. I will say the flavors were then good for desserts. sure. Then desserts. Okay, we didn't have one. <laughs> we didn't have two. We had three desserts. Why? I don't know. We just wanted because them. Because we could. <laughs> because we can't, that's why. You know, when you're, you're in a French restaurant, you feel like you need to indulge in dessert, right? And of course, beautiful wine. So the first one we had was a Nutella and banana crepe. It was beautiful. We all know the flavor profile of Nutella. It's that hazelnut and dreamy. chocolate, dreamy love with very thinly sliced bananas served with a uh, little powdered sugar on top. And it was chocolate just sauce. chocolate yeah. sauce. I think it was just more of the uh, right. Nutella thinned out. Very good, very simple, but you know what? I love it. I agree. Next we have the chocolate uh, profiteroles. Those are like a puff, uh, like think of an eclair. Yeah. It's cut in half with chocolate on top with ice cream. I'm not a huge fan of those. I don't really love like ice cream with pastry. It's just chocolate. See, she likes desserts, but I'm not a sweet. Not Get too a sweet. Of it's too sweet for me, <laughs> and I don't like it when it melts. It's dessert. It's supposed to be that way. It's okay, but the key, I think, here, the star was the... Um, the tar tatan. This was beautiful. It would think apple pie, perfectly, perfectly executed a gigunda slice, and <laughs> that's for big. 50 people. And it had beautiful dust of cinnamon on it. The flavors were just spot really on. Good. It's like fall on a plate. And that came beautiful. with ice cream too, right? Yeah, and I think they, they range from 8.95 to 10.95. So perfect to share, perfect way to end a perfect meal. Wow, this has been an incredible experience, yes. and I love France already. I do too. And no French fries either. That's amazing. No pommes frites. No pommes frites. What do you like? What's your best? I like? love the breakfast crepes. I didn't think I was going to love them. They just the flavors really surprised me. They were just so luxurious. I have to say that. I'm going to say the chicken curry salad. Yeah. Who knows? You come to such a great restaurant, and the flavors were just spot on. And I'm going to say, gosh, another breakfast item. I love the eggs uh, Beau Arts. I love love flavors. Now for me, my favorites were real easy. The Booyah Base. Yes. I mean, come on, shrimp and clams oh, and oh, mussels, beautiful. It's delicious. The beauty of the sea. The duckling a l'orange, you don't see it very often. It's yeah. a classic French dish. I love this one. Yeah. And again, I, I gotta say the chicken curry salad. Yeah. My only thing is I, I like wanted more salad. of it. I want about a gallon of it. Me too. A big scoop, a little bigger scoop. I agree, it was so good. Was I delicious. can't, I think this is the first time ever that Alan liked a salad. It was delicious. Yeah.
you know, I hope we really inspired you. I mean, Greece and France in about an hour and a half. I mean, you can't beat it. And uh, just spectacular food, yeah. excellent service, and just two great restaurants. Yeah, you know, from where, no matter where you're located, the Palm Springs, Palm Desert area is not far. Get in your car and come out and experience. This is a culinary mecca out here. A no traffic, day. not like Orange County really in LA. Isn't. And beautiful shopping, and so many things to do and see, and of course eat. And you want to come for <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner while All you three. come. <laughs> Until next time, food critic Alan Borgen. And I'm Trisha Jansen. Happy eating, everybody. Let's dine out. We're like, <laughs> What's so nice about this is if you remember Le Cheminet. That's okay, just pretend the camera's not here. Just talk to him. Just go ahead, look at look at him, not me. Don't look at the camera. <laughs> So we've got crepes. They're stuck with scrambled. <laughs> Closed captioning provided by Sammy's Cafe Number no. Two. Open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Sammy's Cafe Number no. Two in Rancho Cucamonga. Let's Dine Out is made possible by support from Food for Life Baking Company, makers of over 60 organic, all natural sprouted baked goods, as well as gluten free and vegan products. Food for Life Baking Company, dedicated to better health since 1964. Foodforlife.com. Serve Pro of South Redlands, Ukaipa, providing 24 hour emergency service to any size residential or commercial emergencies like water, fire, mold, or storm damage. Professional, insured, and bonded. Serve Pro of South Redlands, Ukaipa. Bratworks Gourmet Hot Dogs in Redlands, contemporary casual dining featuring gourmet hot dog and sausage sandwiches, salads, and other culinary creations. Other locations in San Bernardino and Palm Desert. And viewers like you, supporting local public television. Thank you.